Okay. Okay. Uh, as Eva was saying, uh, Michael has always been uh, probably one of the most artistic members of our family. When he was in college, he majored in philosophy, uh, communications, communications, and theater. Speech and theater. Speech and theater. But anyway, we had that knockdown, drag out battle, and uh, I finally sat down with Michael, and I at that time was hoping that he would consider going into law. And uh, he says, Dad, this is what I want to do. I really do. And as I said, while he was in high school and in college, he was a good student, but he didn't break records. He entered the seminary. Michael, excuse me, Michael understood uh, uh, our son. I could never understand why a healthy boy like he was, with, uh, you know, liking the girls and having a good time and everything, he <laughs> wanted to, and also, I mean, we're not rich, but we're not poor. And so I felt that, you know, being in the priesthood, he had to go through difficulties, mm -hmm. even a monetary, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, I was hoping that he would never want to go or to become celibate because I want my children to be, and I knew that children, they love family. So he would have been very lonely if he had gone to become a celibate priest. Nothing wrong with that, but I'm saying I felt sure. he needed to he have, you know, right. yes. And uh, so. He, his father understood. Michael had been at the altar, you know, uh, serving as an altar boy when he was younger. I was never, uh, you know, uh, I never had the desire to become a nun. So he called me, Michael called me just before, Father Michael called me before he was ready to uh, graduate. And he says, I want you and I to get together. So I knew what he was talking about. And I, it was Wednesday. I says, you know, Dad will come with us. And he says, no, I want you. So we sit down, we cry, and he says to me, I have a flame inside me that tells me I have to serve God. Please let me go for one year, support me, help me to go. And if that does not work, I will just come back and go, you know, you know, or go for a, a law. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what happened. He, you know, we said, okay, you know, I understood that he, you know, had to do it. So he went to the seminary. Go ahead. So, uh, after a lot of uh, mm -hmm. finesse and cry and everything, he did enter the seminary. Uh, Michael spent, we won't, we'll talk about his marriage, etc., in a minute, but he did enter the seminary and he spent four years there. And um, that was in Boston? In Boston, in Boston, 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 yes. Brookline, yes. the theological <coughs> uh, seminary there, the Greek, uh, the Greek seminary. Uh, Michael graduated with honors with distinction. It's on his diploma, his master. He graduated with distinction. He was, he just recently has been transferred, and I'm not trying to deviate here on the subject, he's now in another diocese, but during that transfer he sent me a copy of his CV, and I sat there and I couldn't believe what I was reading. Here this is my son, and I wasn't aware of all of the accomplishments, especially even when he was at the seminary, president of the student body, president of the uh, student senate, uh, worked uh, in doing this for the uh, Metropolitan and doing that and what have you, and as I say, graduated with distinction. Uh, he was ordained into the diaconate his, uh, the beginning of his senior year, but of course he married before that. Um, Let's just finish with the last son, Gregory. Uh, Gregory is our youngest. Uh, Gregory is in the computer industry. He's very, very talented uh, oh. in the area of computers. And uh, he has uh, held several positions in the computer industry, and he still is very successful in that line of business. All three of our children are married. All three of our children have married within our church and have married Greeks. Uh, this is nothing to say anything wrong against uh, the interfaith marriages today because I sometimes with Father Michael say, oh, that's a mixed marriage. He says, Dad, we don't call them mixed marriages anymore. They're called interfaith marriages. And in our own church here in Aurora, at St. Athanasius, I would say, 50% of it or more are interfaith marriages sure. and very successful marriages too. But our oldest, Elena, met uh, Nicholas Vranas through our dance troupe, uh, her uh, Kubari, who were members of our dance troupe, one day uh, made a remark uh, how much they enjoyed performing with the group. And they Elena, became the Kubari yeah, after. Afterwards, but they, 
she admired their marriage and relationship, and she said one day to uh, uh, her Kubata, "You wouldn't, uh, you're, you know." Actually, it was Peter and Peter. Uh, you wouldn't his happen to have wife, a, Cindy. Yeah, you wouldn't happen Brandis. to have a uh, uh, a brother or something. He said, "Yeah, I do happen to have a brother." Uh, and uh, it was Nick. They had a blind date, and one thing led to another, and uh, we had a wedding. The discussion of the wedding is a whole different yeah, subject. Let's we'll, we'll cover that <coughs> in a minute. But um, uh, the other child, uh, Father Michael, married a Greek girl out of our church here in Aurora. She's from Plainfield, Illinois, uh, Christina Hulis. And um, Gregory met a girl from Maryville, Indiana. When Through Christina and Father Michael, because yeah. Father Michael was at the time in Maryville. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he oh. was he was in Maryville for two years, and he met uh, um, Anna Marie uh, Turpa there, a Greek girl also. So all three of our children have married. We've been uh, very lucky. Have married uh, I mean, not in the only church. Greek, they're good, good people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderful people. And we have six uh, grandchildren, three boys and three girls. Um, Elena, as I said, uh, marriage is kind of unique. Um, Michael uh, got married um, and uh, entered. Uh, he was the first one to yes, get married. Yes, he was the first to get married, believe it or not. Yeah. And uh, he wanted to get married because he couldn't become ordained right. until he was married. He did not want to be an Archimandriti. So he got married. And um, Elena's wedding. Uh, Are you ready for that? Well, I know that you're going so we, to take you know, the camera away from yeah, me. Yeah, um, before we get into Elena's wedding, because I guess this is part of the story of the dance group, right? It's tied up okay. also. With kind of, yes. Ca ca kind of, right? Yes. Um, before we go into... Mm -hmm. No, before we go into the dance group, <clears throat> let's say when you were growing up, right? Let's yes. talk about... Uh, Inside the house, were you communicate with your parents in Greek or English? Let's I say, went let's to Greek school for seven years. Yeah. We had Father Leonikis, Manusos Leonikis, who is uh, who is now retired, and we are Kubati because my father baptized one of his sons. Um, he was at uh, Joliet for many years. He's been at uh, Holy Apostles or, or Saint John's. didn't have a church at the time. We did not have a church. And every once in a while, on a Saturday, Father Leonikis would come out and hold services at the Episcopalian Church in downtown Aurora. But we did not have an, uh, a church when I was growing up. But I did go to Greek school uh, for about seven years. And at home, my mom and dad, of course, dad being you know from the old country, uh, spoke mostly Greek around the house, and I learned to speak Greek. And I, I learned some of it from my grandmother, too, when she would come and visit. And I spent a year out in California in Burbank living with them when they were out there also. And, of course, you wanted to speak with Grandma and Grandpa, you had to learn to speak Greek. That's how my children learned to speak Greek, because Yaya, Eva's mother, mm -hmm. lived with us, and she could not speak any English. So if you wanted to commute communicate with Yaya, you had to learn Greek, and that's how all of our children have learned but, uh, Greek. But also, you have to understand, uh, his father, uh, even if he was born in Greece, his mother is very unique. She loved Greece, even if she was born in the United States. She was more Greek in some ways than your dad was. And she was the one, because dad was an immigrant, he was working the restaurant, he didn't have time to go to church, so it is a miracle that the, the faith and the uh, ethnic has been kept in their home because mother also couldn't drive, didn't, didn't know how to drive. So it was, I mean, but she did everything she could to bring the priest to the house to teach Greek to her children and to the community, mm -hmm. do. Uh, and she was um, a very, uh, very aggressive woman for her time. Of course, for her to elope, she had to be aggressive. And uh, she also uh, played a very part, a big part, in the Greek church here in Aurora, as far as uh, uh, with the Sunday school and everything. So I'm just saying all these things sure. to uh, make you understand that uh, it was not the immigrant father. It was the mother who was born in the United States. That, and uh, his mother writes better than my father-in-law. And when she wanted to write a letter to the Dimarco, to the mayor in uh, Levidi or somebody, she would call me and she would say, she would read it to me. And then she would say, uh, is this Ita or Yota? You know, mm -hmm. for the, uh, uh, 
uh, orthography, you know, to make it to spelling, to be corrected. So I think your mother was the strongest person in yes, your, you know. Yes, that's very true. And um, you were talking about my childhood, yeah. Our next door neighbors were Greek. We associated primarily with Greeks. Yeah, I went to an American uh, grade school and high school, as did my uh, brother and sister. Um, but we were always involved with the Greeks and the Greek community. We had a, a pretty good-sized Greek community here in, Ar in Aurora. And as I said to you earlier when you first came, you know, it was not unusual that the big uh, events would be when it was someone's ERT. You know, you come by, it was St. John's Day, so you went to Yanis, Spiti, because they had a medal trapezi with a guitar and stuff. And afterwards, sometimes they'd play poker in the back room, but <laughs> usually, they would trapezio, sit around the table trabudia. and they sing the tragudia to trapezi. To trapeziu. To trapeziu. Yeah. And I, as a little boy, instead of going out and playing with the little kids, I would sit there with them because I used to enjoy to hear them sit there and sing that with their little glass of krasaiki and their little cafe daiki and uh, the baksimadia and stuff after dinner and they would sing till all hours of the night. Uh, so were they kind of folk songs or kind of the more modern songs? No, or, no, no. Most no, of them were folk it was, songs. It was, uh, no, it was uh, folkloric songs. Folkloric songs. It was uh, songs that they used to uh, sing in the old country. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, do, because they didn't have the radio and everything. Right. So they used to sing different, like when we used to have the workshops. And you remember what, uh, what was his name? The one Paul Guinness. The, uh, Guinness. That he was um, teaching us. And then he would say from one village to the other, they would, they would um, answer things, you know. Yeah. So there were songs like that they were singing. They were old songs, mm -hmm. not things that, you know, even myself, that I'm older than you, yeah. uh, know yeah. or I understand because one, I'm from Athens. One you know? person would right. sing a stanza and then the other person, they'd repeat the stanza. Or one person would sing a stanza and then the whole people around the table would repeat the stanza. And then they'd sing another stanza and then they would repeat the, the stanza. And uh, that was part of my, my upbringing. And we went to Joliet. We drove uh, half hour, 45 minutes to go to church in Joliet when we had the opportunity. And I was an altar boy there, too, in Joliet. When I returned from Okinawa in 1965, the oh, excuse me, during my childhood, the Ahepa in Aurora, <coughs> chapter 332, was very active. That's what kind of held... That was the cohesive bond that held the Greeks together in Aurora. Especially the because there was not a church. No, right. there was no church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The dinners, the dances, and all that sort of stuff were really the order of Ahepa, chapter 332. And we had no sons of Pericles here, chapter. It was okay. the order of Ahepa. Mm -hmm. Well, someone got the idea that they were going to write to the uh, Supreme Lodge in Washington, D.C. and see if I could become an Ahepa. And I was 15 years old. The bottom line is that I, another gentleman by the name of Harry Kulos, and a fella in Chicago, his last name is Pappas, I forgot what his first name is, those three of us received special dispensation from a gentleman called V.I. Chibidis, who was a supreme president back there, and allowed the three of us to become initiated into the order of Ahepa, bypassing the sons of Pericles. So I hold this distinction with these two other gentlemen. Harry Kulo still lives in Aurora. I have no idea where Mr. Pappas is in Chicago. Still hold the distinction of being the youngest members of the order of Ahepa ever initiated. And then someone in the Supreme Lodge said, whoa, wait a minute, we can't do this, and they closed the door on it. So that was it. Just the so you had to be, what, 18 years old? Or uh, you were, you, um, I'm not sure if it was 18 or 21 to become an yeah. Ahepa, and you, were, you, you went in the, the Sons of, of Pericles. Pericles. Right. Yeah, the youth. So Son of Pericles was like the youth organization. The youth yes. organization, yes. and the, there was the Daughters <laughs> of Penelope, and uh, what was the uh, young woman? The Maids of Athens. Maids of Athens. Maids yeah. of Athens. But that that was the, I also uh, think it was after. It was not the, the, when they first started. Uh, I'm not 100% I'm not I'm not, sure I'm not on sure. that. Okay. But anyway, I was very active. I went to several national conventions. I went to New York City. I went down to Houston, Texas uh, as a delegate. Here I was 16. By this time I was 16, 17 years old, and I was going as, as a, a delegate to the Order of Ahepa National Conventions. And uh, again, trying to maintain my ethnic heritage, being a part of the Greek uh, community and the Greek culture. So, when, so <clears throat> I don't know what to change the subject, but also, except, you know, getting now involved with Akepa, also, were you involved with any activities in your school, or, oh, you yes. know, 
Your school? Oh, in school? In school yeah. also, you know, like being in sports or in, yeah, uh, I was, being I, in some I played clubs. Or I, I played in the band. I was a drum major in the band. I sang in the glee club. I sang in the chorus. I sang in a barbershop quartet. Mm, you uh, were in, in In high school, I was in many plays. Uh, uh, maybe it's the theatrical part of me. But uh, I was in many plays. Then when I got into college, I became uh, very involved with the school. I was class president in, in high school my senior year. I was class president my senior year in college of my class. I also became very involved in the biology and zoology club and um, became a student assistant in uh, the department of chemistry. I majored, I graduated with my major in biochemistry and zoology. And uh, my sophomore year in college, I became uh, very involved with Dr. Coton, who was the head of the Department of Chemistry there, and I became a student assistant uh, with the freshman uh, basic uh, inorganic chemistry labs. And then we had a research lab downstairs, and I became very involved with that too. And in my CV, you'll read there where I presented a paper before the American Chemical Society and received a certificate for that, of the reaction of beta alanine with phenyl isocyanate. But I was very involved with, with chemistry. and. Um, my senior year, right after he had written my letter of recommendation and signed it and sent it off to dental school, the head of the Department of Zoology, where I was majoring, Dr. Eigenbrot, dropped dead of a heart attack. So Dr. Keck, who was the head of the Department of Biology, came to me and another gentleman, James Esterly, Dr. Esterly, who has just passed away not uh, about a, two years ago, uh, went on into pathology, uh, came to uh, Jim and me and said, um, would you two like to take over Dr. Eigenbrot's classes? We're now seniors. And I said, you've got to be joking. We're just students. Mm -hmm. And he says, I would like you two to take over his freshman zoology class. So the last half of the year, Jim and I did all the lecturing to the freshman zoology classes. We wrote all the exams and ran the laboratories and everything like that. And I was a student, and I was getting a little paycheck from, from, the, unit, from the college as a, as a professor there, uh, as a student uh, teacher there. And... Um, was very active in in the college too in plays and uh, what have you. Oh, that's good. <laughs> now, when I uh, graduated uh, or uh, left the the Navy and came here in 1965, the community uh, was just starting the movement towards possibly getting a church organized here in Aurora. And I remember the first meeting we had down at a VFW hall downtown in Aurora, 228 Galena. Uh, where we discussed it and decided we're all going to sign a petition. Eva and I are signers of the original petition to the Archdiocese to uh, get a church established here in Aurora. And we did. And uh, we named it St. Athanasios after a guy by the name of Tom Drosos, who donated uh, a large amount of money to be used to, to build a temporary Conostasio. It was after his mother's <coughs> Yeah, after. And we had the church upstairs on the second floor. It was a very small room, probably about as big as my family room inside. And we had some old uh, chairs, holding chairs up there. We had a temporary conostasio. And our first priest was Father uh, uh, Zanis, Steve Zanis, who uh, has now passed away. Uh, his son uh, still runs their business that they had. He had another business where he made vestments for priests, Catholic priests and Greek Orthodox priests. He was our first priest, and we were there for several years and then moved it downstairs onto the first floor um, with, and Father, Cavadias, with yeah. Father Cavadias, who then came. And so when was the first year that you 1965, started? the church. Oh, the 1965? 1965. Right I came home from Okinawa, I know, so and right we, had, uh, we had that first meeting, and Eva and I, and we, there is a plaque in that our church fast. that has the names <laughs> of those Aurora people, there were about 40 We've of us. We've been busy. Who, yeah. who signed the uh, original charter, and we started the uh, the So church. you went downstairs then? What then we you? went downstairs onto the first floor, mm -hmm. which was a little bit bigger, and we were there for a couple, two or three years with Father Cavadias, and then Father Cavadias left us. I can't give you all the exact dates, sure. but Father um, uh, Chekos, or no, no, we had Father um, Granyas, Br uh, Granyas, and his son is a priest also, and Father yeah, Granyas... Mm -hmm. Father Granas was with us only about a year or two, something two like years. that, two years. And then um, Father Chekos came 
and he's out east now. In Sylvania. Yeah, and, and it was at that time we decided, uh, I became the chairman of the uh, building committee. As my CV will tell you, I've served on the parish council for 35 years, mm -hmm. and uh, I resigned last year after uh, deciding Thank it was God. time <laughs> to hang it up. I served as parish council president five times. Uh, Frank Demas just tied my record this year, having served also five times. Um, we decided that we're going to break ground. They made me the chairman of the building committee, so we bought some property out on Fifth Avenue here in Aurora, and we built the uh, the hall, some classrooms, the Grafio, Pos Poles Fores, and we, yeah, and we, us, and we uh, divided off part of the hall and put up a temporary altar with the Iconostasio and everything like that, and we were there for several years until we could raise enough money to build a sanctuary. Uh, we hired a, a architect. I went with a, a group up to Michigan to visit a church that the architect from Aurora, he's now passed away, Louis Cordigan, Elinas, who uh, helped us design the church, and we uh, kind of fashioned it after this church that was up in, up in Michigan, and uh, built the church, the sanctuary, and uh, have been there ever since. Our church, the Metropolitan, used to come out and said, Pui sa este brepe de Axus ta Corafia, you know, you're out in the boondocks. He says, you know, <coughs> they're, um, he, he, they used to, you know, laugh about us. Now, St. Athanasius in Aurora is probably one of the most progressive and fastest growing churches in the entire Chicago diocese. We presently have over 350 children in Sunday school registered. I don't know about 300, but 300 children. Between 300 and 350 <laughs> if they're all there. Uh, we Feel had to build me. 10 extra classrooms so and add on, oh. add on to the building because we just didn't have enough enough room. Um, we uh, then. Had, so how many members are? In the there's got to be. We got to be somewhere between 450 to 500, mm -hmm. somewhere around there. Uh, but a lot of new people. Uh, a lot of the Aurora people are still here, but Ethne Pethani a lot. Uh, a lot of people have died and passed or on moved. or okay. moved. And we, uh, I would say most of the community is made up of Naperville, St. Charles, Lyle, but a lot of Naperville-ians make up the bulk of our, our membership there at St. Athanasios. And um, after... How long did it take for the church to be built? The, the sanctuary portion? Mm -hmm. uh, about a year, year and a half, oh. something like that. Mm -hmm. Something like that, yeah. And um, then after Father uh, Chacos left, Father um, Casas, uh, Bill Casas came in and he was with us for a few years. And then um, he was going to be leaving and um, I was on the selection committee and uh, it's kind of a cute story but I don't know if I'll go into it all. But um, it, uh, we ended up interviewing and hiring uh, Father Chris Constantinidis. Okay. Uh, Father Constantinidis uh, was, uh, no, I wasn't going to discuss that. Um, <laughs> so the, back then, then, the church committee was, you know, had, had the right to select a priest? No. So the, yes. No, Always. no, no. My wife wasn't on the parish council for the day. But I'm saying... Technically, the, the, the bishop the was bishop the usually one who will, did that. Or the church. But we had had some issues and some problems here. And when it came time to select a new priest, and the bishop called and said, you are going to interview this priest, uh, I said, whoa, wait a minute. You promised me we would have some input. Okay. And he said, well, I want you to talk to this man anyway. So we did speak with the man and decided we did not want to go with that. And that was when I told him I would like to speak with Father Constantinides. And he okay. said, how do you know, Father Constantinides? I said, in all due respect, Never mind. Please, can you set that up? And of course, everyone knows his father, Father Evaguaras, Constantinidis. But to make again a long story short, we interviewed him and we hired him, and Father Chris was with us for 15 years. In fact, I just talked to him on the phone this morning. Um, he's now Great guy. Um, uh, yeah, 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 and work with body because his son Evan. Ejifaftisi uh, Mariana, Gregory's uh, youngest. You know, our dancer, our good dancer. Uh, uh, and um, yeah, yeah. yeah, Evan. And I, I talked to him last night too, about ten o'clock last night. But anyway, 
Uh, besides being very good friends, we're Kubati too, and uh, he's now to Bethesda, Maryland, and we now have Father Peter Spiro, who uh, was the assistant priest at Holy Apostles, who is now here at our, at our present parish. After about 35 years of um, being involved with the community, I served as the choir director for 18 years. I was the Psalty for a while, then choir director for 18 years. Parish Council, Chairman of the Building Committee, Chairman of the Consecration Committee. Uh, we ran the whole consecration and um, I decided it was time to get out and also I felt because I have a son who's a priest too, it was probably a little conflict of interest mm -hmm. because I tend to be a little outspoken and I just felt with the pressure from my wife and my son it was time to get off the parish council and uh, I miss him a little bit but um, it was a, the best thing I did was uh, decide to resign. I still am active, I'm still active with the festival committee and of course with the dance troupe. So that's kind of our my background as far as uh, the church is concerned. As far as dentistry is concerned, uh, again, that's in my CV. I spent, um, I got very involved with dental politics and have done a great deal. Um, there's several pages in there explaining all of it, but probably the highlight of my uh, dental career would be that I was elected president of the Illinois State Dental Society. That's mm -hmm. the highest position you can achieve in dentistry in the, in the state without going to the American Dental, which is national and I don't want anything to do with that. <laughs> but I, I served as president of the Fox River Valley, our local component, and all the chairs, vice president, secretary, president-elect, all the way up, and, and president of the Illinois State Dental Society. My wife didn't want me to do this. She fought me with it. She uh, didn't like the idea that I was getting involved because it took a lot of time out of my office and my practice, especially the year I was the president. Um, and I've served on numerous committees that have uh, rewritten some laws and legislation that have been changed. Well, it was a very good cause. It was yeah. just he was still too young, and we had too many obligations uh, with children in college, children in professional schools. I mean, all three of them, like Michael said, they have gone to private schools, and so it was. I felt that you know, yeah. and uh, but he he, you know, I'm very proud of him. Uh, so, so you're still practicing? Are you still practicing? Oh, yeah. Yes, but I finally have made a big decision. Um, I am going to hang it up uh, December 31st of next year, 2005. Uh, we're in the negotiating stage or talking stage with a couple of people who are interested in coming in and buying uh, my, me out of my practice. My partner, I think, is going to continue for another two or three more years. Uh, but um, I've been practicing dentistry for 41 years right now, as of today and it'll be 42 years next year, but uh, I've been very active. I, I still am chairman of peer review for the northern part of Illinois. Uh, this is in the situation where somebody, a patient, is unhappy with something that has happened in a doctor's office. They report it to the state. It comes, if it's in my component, my geographic area, it comes back to me and I handle it through mediation and or if it can't be resolved through mediation then it goes to full peer review which is like a little trial and I'm chairman of that for about 15 years now and I hope to be giving that up mm. to pretty soon too. Michael is a leader <laughs> I mean with you you know so it just uh, well since your days in school you were always so active and you just maintained that yes. your whole life yes. well, that's why he's very concerned now how he's going to slow down you know we're just talking about That's, it's, it's, how it's, you're going to take uh, a big thing. Without fighting with your wife all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Be with your wife 24-7 the rest of your life. Huh? Or with your but, husband. Uh, <laughs> no, when, <laughs> when, when you've been practicing as many years as I have, and uh, I don't know why they call it the practice, the practice of medicine, the practice of dentistry, it makes it sound like we're practicing you know, <laughs> on somebody, but we're not. But that's the, that's the way the term Sometimes goes. Sometimes I'm but, sure you do. <laughs> but uh, I enjoy what I'm doing. <laughs> I've enjoyed what I've been doing all these years. And uh, I have patients who've been with me for 35, 40 years, um, who started with me in 1965. And all of a sudden, that morning when you get up and say, oh, I'm not going to the office. I don't have to. And I've got staff 
Uh, one young lady, a hygienist, has been with me 35 years. Uh, two of my office managers have been with me 27 years. I have uh, my senior surgical assistant's been with me 17 years. Another girl, 16 years. None of the hygienists are there except one new one, less than 20 years. So we have a great, it's yeah, like a family. Sure. And all of a sudden, you know, one of them came in the other day and put her arms around me, gave me a hug and said, it's not going to be the same when you go, when you're not going to be here in the morning. To say, good morning, how's everybody? Let's start. Life goes on. Started. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's time, it's time to hang it up. Now, um, a very, very important part of our life, of course, has been the dance troupe. And of course, part, part of the dance troupe will involve also the wedding, but we really have to talk about the dance troupe kind of first. Mm -hmm. Let's and yeah. Let's talk about how it all started or how well, it, it all started became. with the woman. After dance troupe, it's going to be mine. <laughs> well, mine talk. <laughs> I, I I get to put the color in, okay. like you've been adding the, the color, color to my okay. discussion. <laughs> Eva really is the founder of, of the dance troupe, and this this October, uh, when is it? The twenty fourth of October. Uh, you'll be receiving an invitation. Um, we are celebrating thirty years. Uh, you were at our 20-year anniversary, and this will be our 30-year anniversary. And there have been a lot of alumni who've gone through there. At that time, we had over 100 of them. And I think the Brexia pops are starting to get a little cooler. Chilly. That's fine. But um, uh, Eva really started the dance troupe 30 years ago, so I'm going to let her talk about, about that, because I joined her about a year later. So we'll let Eva talk a little bit about the, the Apollo no, no, dance troupe. Um, I saw the need uh, in the community. The Greek school w was having very difficult times. And uh, difficult times because uh, you had parents that were born here, like Michael. And uh, of course I was in between. I was not fitting in the group that they were fighting the Greek school. The ones that were from Greece mm -hmm. and uh, the ones that they were born here. Yeah. And I was in the middle. I was not with one part or the other. I sent my kids to school, if you can believe it, only for one month. My children, they learned Greek in my house with my mother because it was not, I mean, it was very unorganized as far as I was concerned. So I thought, the more I thought about it, I thought that the religion is going to stay. We're going to, you know, work it all along from one, or, you know, generation to the other. The language, no matter how realistic we are, the United States, yes. when you're talking down, you know, four, five, six generations, I see it happening. I'm very sad, but it's happening in my family now. And I have three children that are married to Greeks. But I holler at my daughter, you know, they send their kids to Greek school. I say, that does not do anything. You have to speak it at home. You know, you have to, 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 to use it all the time. So I only, you know, my biggest hope is the two girls of Elena's because I also am, you know, I talk to them, even if they don't understand, I talk to them in Greek, and then I translate if I see that, you know, they are puzzled what I'm talking about. So the main thing was that um, I felt that with dancing and the music, we could feel like Greeks. We can have like the Irish, the Germans, you know, it comes the, you know, Oktoberfest, and they, you know, if they, even if they don't know what they're singing, they feel like Germans, okay? So I felt that this was, what was going to keep the group in Aurora, especially. The Chicago had the schools. It was more organized mm -hmm. than Aurora. And uh, that's how it started. So I, the, the first thing that happened, it was the president of the Aurora uh, church, that he knew I love to dance. When I came from Greece, I didn't know how to dance. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, I said, oh. Mm -hmm. you know, I'd go samba, rumba, and you know, those days that you used to dance. So it was here when I saw my sister-in-law dance the chamico, and you know, then because what we had learned at school, I went to Plaka, Proto Gymnasium, and the equipo in Dora Stratu, mm -hmm. that was the, for the men. Mm -hmm. And the mine was just the black down, it was for the females, you know, for the, the girls' school. And uh, so we learned a few dances, but they were the scholiki, and they were very... Um, Basic. Uh, not only basic, they were not even the, the true Authentic. dances. It was whatever every teacher felt that they mm -hmm. had learned a little bit and they would put their own color and everything. And we danced, you know. 
I mean, like the Zamiko, it was Pidikto, it was just, you know, not even, you know, mm -hmm. Zamiko after. And uh, so when I came to this country, I learned just basic dances. But I love to dance, you know, I love the music. And I, so the president, he says to me, please organize some of the ladies and uh, dance. But before that, the daughters of uh, Penelope, we went to uh, a nursing home. And I got a few ladies, we put, I mean, our, our costumes, they were just ridiculous, but whatever we could, you know, put together. And then it was when I, I asked Gregory to come along. And Gregory was the first one. And he was young, he was like 11, 10, 11 years old, to come. But then when I started to dance to, uh, after, for the festival, and I organized, you know, a few, again, who were more the older people that I had, uh, then uh, I said to Gregory, and of course I took my family because that was, you know, true source, you know, to go to my family. And Mike was, he says, I don't know how to dance, but I would be interested. So I knew that I would put anything on him and he would be happy, you know. And Father Michael, the same way, you know, I can make him an, uh, you know, absent, whatever I want. So Gregory says, no way, I'm not going to put a skirt. I'm not going to wear a skirt. He goes, very, very upset with me. So I called the proxenia embassy and I said to them I said do you have any costumes and they said we used to have costumes that would land out but they said every time when they come back they're destroyed mm -hmm. so they said but we have uh, like an Amalia I think they had and uh, they said come and we'll see what we can put together so I went and I uh, borrowed from them an absence costume an Amalia costume and then they had a Cretan costume so I come home and I says to Gregory, I says, hey, I says, you know, I got a Cretan costume. And those guys, I says, they are so much. And mm. I says, they can put a little pillow on the back and they dance. And he put an outfit on, you know, the, the story mm -hmm. on, and he just loved it. Mm. He just loved it. And that's how the whole thing started. So little by little, the people, they would say, can you take my son? Can you take my daughter? So then, first, hold on, you started just with your son and... Uh, with, a few, with a few, few children, women, children, of, children. and uh, yeah, and children. women. I mean, the beginning, beginning. Mm -hmm, yes, yeah. uh, Gregory was the first one to. Gregory's been with it since day one. Yeah, oh, and one. then uh, Elena and and uh, Michael, and then. So did you have weekly? Did you start weekly practices? After or? that, yes, we did. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then uh, the Panagopoulos, another family that they used to live here. Their children, they said, you know, please, you know, uh, we want to be part of it. And uh, the thing was also, it was wonderful because the people then, that the troop is not the same now. Like most, you know, the children are not the same. It's different, you know, it, mm, things sure. they change. But uh, the parents, because also we didn't have the church, uh, you know, accomplished, the youth group. It was, the dance troupe became the youth group. Yeah, sure, sure. And uh, so the parents, you say to me, can I help you? Uh, I'll make, you know, a uh, vest for you, or we'll make the capella, or, you know, the heads or whatever. And so we worked like a family. But, but the purpose was to teach the dances to children? To the children, yes, after, yes. Okay. To, like, yeah. young children, or how old, or, or whoever would come. Whoever wanted, wanted to come. To come. Because, whoever, like Eva adult. said, there was not much. In fact, we even had a problem with one of the priests who's long gone, and it's years ago, so I'm not going to mention names who was upset because he couldn't get the kids out for Goya. They didn't like him and there was some problems and what have you, but yet dance practice would be <laughs> packed, yeah. you know, and we would, uh, and, and it was a way to keep the youth going and, and, and as a result, the parents, which were more the Greeks then, now of course a lot more interfaith, but I mean, uh, a lot of the old time Greeks were so happy, you know, Bidista Periyama, you know, it was the most, they were proud yeah. and they were happy about that. It was see? a lot of dedication uh, on my part. I used to bring them in my garage and teach them. Mm -hmm. If there was a child that couldn't, you know, there were children that, like you know, mm -hmm. that you think they have three left feet, okay? Mm -hmm. Michael would give up with them. <laughs> and I would say, I remember one girl in particular, I used to, I mean, I was much younger, and she couldn't, she couldn't come down. I mean, she couldn't just, you know, go down. And I would say, if I can do it, if I can, you know, I would just take a post and just hold the post and just, you know, do that at home and just try to go down, you know, to make some of the shoes. Yeah. So, but Michael, many times, uh, he just felt that uh, there's no way. 
I mean, you cannot make her a dancer. You cannot make him a dancer. And I will bring them here and just, you know, spend time. hours of my time to just teach them how to So dance. you were the principal instructor? Oh, in the beginning, oh, in the beginning. yes. In the beginning. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. And yeah. how did you learn all of the dances since uh, you hadn't danced before? Just then we started to uh, go to some of the workshops. workshops uh, I think some of the workshops back in about 84, 85. I've got videotapes that are in beta. That's how old they are. Uh, in Tarpon Springs with John Lulius and Levin Dia. Uh, I've got one I just looked at the other day, uh, 1986 workshop with John Lulius in, in uh, Tarpon Springs. Uh, and we've attended, God, so many, Joe Graziosi, Paul Guinness. Uh, and the other thing that we did Bar a lot. Metal Metalianos. Metalianos, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. but, she was an but instructor, But what we too. did a lot, we would go to some of the organizations, like we would go to the Cretan, and just try to see, you know, if we can ha get somebody to come out and help a little bit. So, yeah. And, uh, you know, and go... Show them. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, also some of the, I mean, we, then Father Zanis, gave me uh, some of the, because it was hard to get also the music, you know, that's the uh, thing that upsets me. And from the beginning we said, yeah, I'm sure that there were things that we were taught that were not authentic. And I'm sure you have had the same mm -hmm, experience mm -hmm. because you go back to a dance 10 years after and they say, no, you're supposed to do it this way. But always, uh, both myself and Michael and now the children, you know, Alina, Gregory and Evan, they try to keep it as uh, Try to maintain the authenticity as, of the as dance can, as much because, as possible. I mean, if yep. we all start to change, and you know that better than I do, uh, if we all start to change a little bit of this and that, it's not going to be Greek dancing. It's I going to be Eva's dancing and, uh, you know, Orfea's dancing. I think Orfea's that's dancing. a very, very important thing that our dance troupe and Orfea's too, because I know your brother and I have talked about this before, and uh, we, of course, uh, we've got a nice group and we're very happy with our group. It doesn't compare with the, the magnitude of your group and, and the places mm -hmm. that you've performed and all that. But there's one thing that we have in common as, as opposed to other groups that I have seen who have literally bastardized the Greek folk dance. And the music and, too. And they've taken yeah. modern music and you don't dance uh, a tsamiko or a um, um, Critico dance wearing fustanelles and saruja. I've seen and dances performed. I've seen a Fendozali dance with a fustanella and saruja on. I've seen Zorba's dance dance with fustanelles on and stuff. That's that's uh, a travesty. I mean, I can't I can't believe I see that sometimes. In fact, your brother and I was at a performance once where we stood next to each other and staring at each other like we can't believe what we're seeing here. Nevertheless. But uh, we that's were one very thing lucky. that our group, and I know Orfeas is very fussy about, and that is maintaining. Yes, there is some poetic license occasionally. Uh, we do the Zepekiko, the crowd enjoys, where the boys sure. balance the wine glass on their head. They used to do that in the Cafenia sure. back in, in, in Turkey. Uh, so that's not really deviating much. And this the pyramid where the boys get up on their shoulders. We, we got that, we copied that from uh, Le Vendia in Tarpon Springs. Uh, aside from that, we've tried to maintain very strictly as much as possible the authenticity The other of the thing dance. that you were asking me why I started, it was uh, maybe in the beginning it was a selfish point, not uh, of course for the uh, ethnic to keep it, but also it was to keep, keep my family together. I knew where they were in the summertime because we danced in the beginning. There was no affairs, there was weekend. no uh, mm -hmm. Olympians, you know. Uh, so every weekend we were someplace as a family mm -hmm. dancing. And it was, you know, it was a unity with the community too. The children, I mean, uh, they were many times after dancing, Gregory, Michael, Alina, and all the other kids, they would kiss each other and hug each other. And they were on a high without taking anything. You sure. know, they were, they were so happy. So seeing all that, and this pool that you see here has had so many parties and so many dance troupe, dance troupe school parties. things, you know, here that the kids, they have enjoyed being, you know, together with us. Mm -hmm. So it was, and now those days also the children didn't have as many activities. Yes. Like they do now. Now even my grandchildren, they are so bombarded with so many activities. And uh, so here now, sometimes we have a hard time to get 
the kids, you see them at church and you say, you know, why is so and so, you know, this beautiful boy, why he's not dancing, or why this girl is not dancing. It's just that they are too involved, you know, to so many the things. Yeah. first started, kids were looking for activities. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. And, and they were definitely looking for activities and it was much easier and there was more interest. It's not that there isn't the interest today, but you are time. competing. I mean, I've got some boys that if it isn't volleyball, it's basketball, it's wrestling, it's track. I'm sure you have With the, the girls, things. it's pom-poms, it's cheerleading, it's choir, it's band. I got a yeah. dancer who's an outstanding dancer, but he plays an outstanding saxophone in a jazz band, and it seems like every time I need him, he's he's busy out on they another gig. They all want gig, to, go, to come at the festival time oh. to dance, you know. But, uh, you, you know. Yeah, you need to sure. Yeah. 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 So how then did the group involve, let's say, now do you have also different uh, kids' we, classes? We have, we have three yeah. groups now. Yeah, Eva has... Is Eva's kind of semi-retired now because she lives in Florida for six, seven months and, a year. And I got tired. And she got tired. Mm -hmm. I've still... Because, Michael, excuse me, honey. Also, uh, at the time, we didn't have the finances. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of the things, like I started to tell you, the uh, parents, they helped us. Some of the um, uh, uh, pantaloons that you have borrowed, I think you have borrowed the white uh, from us. Yeah, mm -hmm. white and uh, some of the Cypriot. Yeah. But uh, like the, those pantaloons, some of the jackets and stuff, uh, the, uh, the Cretan jackets, I embroidered them. I had a couple of other women, but me and my mom, we embroidered them. Mm. Uh, I made all the pants for the boys. So it was a lot, it was not only teaching, it was sewing too. So I'm burned out, you yeah. know. And so the other thing is that I felt that the people, as the years that were going by, they were not appreciating the the work. The work. Yeah. So now we order things, yeah. and, you know, and that's it. I'm not making anything anymore. Over the years, um, yeah. the dance troupe has given back to the community uh, well over fifty thousand dollars in cash. Uh, we used to perform, and if we got a check for three hundred dollars, we came and we presented it to the church. And after a while, we realized that what was happening is they were using that to pay the electric bill, the mortgage, and stuff like that, instead yeah, of going to buy iguanas or something like that. So we slowly raised money, and uh, there are seven pews in the church mm -hmm. at $600 a piece that has got Apollo Dance Group name on it. Mm -hmm. And if you come to our church after you turn around from the altar and start coming back out of the church, you'll see at the choir loft that whole back wall, that whole part there Saint is life. the life of St. Athanasius, which cost about eight or nine thousand dollars. We paid for that when it was uh, Shirley, uh, yeah. the late Shirley Contos, the iconographer, did it for us. So we've given back well over fifty thousand dollars to our community. But, I mean, the, but this is direct money now. Direct the, money. The indirect amount should be well, the festival. See, we, we oh, do but that not, doesn't count. Yeah, we, <laughs> what I'm saying should be We really are, more, you know. are similar to your group in the respect that you're not affiliated with anyone. Yeah, we're Saint Ath we're uh, the Apollo <coughs> Dines group and people say from St. Athanasius, but technically we're autonomous. We have our own checking account. We don't have anything to do with the church in the respect that the church or parish council, unlike some dance troops in mm -hmm. other communities, um, tells them where, when, if they can buy, if they can't buy uniform costumes, what have you, when they can perform. We do what I what we want to, but we don't have we the also, support from the church. No, they don't give us any money whatsoever. But we perform because we haven't the, asked either. We have performed at the festival. In return, we practice at the church. We store all of our costumes at the church. So it's a, it's a kind of a mutual sure, understanding sure. and agreement. And all the kids <coughs> are from the church and all that sort of stuff. And the dance troupe has uh, uh, achieved such a... Uh, recognition? Yeah, recognition, shall we say, so that uh, I don't think you'll find anyone in the church that will have a bad word to say about the dance troupe. You know, everyone's, oh yeah, the dance troupe, that's uh, you know, it's our kids. Uh, so, in order to be part of the dance group, do you have to be a member of the church? No, or? no, okay. no, mm -mm. no, absolutely not. Because no. we've had some a, a couple of occasions where it isn't. Mm -hmm. And like Eva was saying earlier, because that too, would be wrong. Things right. have changed. You know, over I, the I don't know how you feel about it yourself. No, I'm just curious because. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, you don't. Uh, things have changed though over the years. Years ago, there was more interest. It was easier to get it because of now where there's too many conflicts and things going on, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's more difficult to keep keep things going but we we have and uh, uh, fortunately Gregory my son uh, who's an outstanding teacher 
and Alina uh, have helped dramatically. And we've also enlisted now a couple of our senior dancers, uh, Foti and George Lajos. But we have three groups also. <coughs> yeah, let's go over. I was just, gonna, I was just yeah. starting to say. Yeah. We have the neophytes, which uh, really are the kids who are in first grade through fourth grade. And uh, they meet right after Joy, which is a junior Orthodox group, on every other Friday night. And uh, Elena and I Not have fourth grade, honeymoon. They're first grade through fourth grade. Oh yeah, then, then through yes, fourth then, grade. Yeah, then and uh, fourth. Elena is and I kind of run that, but uh, honestly, Elena does most of it with a couple of parents who help because again, I'm getting I'm getting up in age and I'm getting a little burned out. I still go to a lot of the practices and I still I still yeah. try to oh, teach. Oh, yeah, I know. Them. I know. And uh, then the intermediates, which are 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. Um, and what they do is they start to learn the dances of the senior troops. So when they graduate and, and start high school, which is where we start our, our senior kids, high school and mm -hmm. above, they will have at least some idea of some of the dances. And uh, they've learned a little better coordination, a little bit better so rhythm. So teaching that? Uh... And that, again, I was involved with it a lot, but I've got uh, Foti uh, Yorgopoulos and uh, uh, George Vlachos, two of my senior dancers who are excellent, and uh, they work with those, those kids a lot. I go to the practices. And they're dedicated. They're but good kids. What I do is a lot of times is I'll say, okay, we're going to do this, and, and I'll show maybe the first few steps that the, the two senior boys know, and then I'll, I'll sit back. I'll just sit back and, uh, and let them kind of take over and go through the repetition of it. Uh, the senior troop, I still work with that, and, but Gregory and Alina do a lot of that too. Gregory, Alina, and uh, Evan. And Evan, Evan yes. Evan yes. is uh, very uh, instrumental. The Evan last will be here in about now. two weeks. He's starting. He'll be starting his senior year at Monmouth College, so we will have him for at least another year. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure what he's going to go on to. Uh, he's been talking seriously to the priesthood too. He's got his papu is a priest. His father's a priest. So I don't know. But I don't so know. Evan is the son of the father of Father Constantine. Yeah. Yeah. Who's, who, who's the of the church, of course. Who was? Uh, who was? Who was? Yeah. was. Yeah. He's yeah. now at Bethesda, Maryland. Yeah. Oh, okay. See? And our son, Father Michael, who was one of my lead dancers, too, is now the Proistamonos and Dean of the Cathedral of the Annunciation in Columbus, Ohio. Oh, that's nice. So now, pretty much, it's you kept like a little family, at least the kids had the, not only the chance to be part of the group, but also, also take over and start teaching. Exactly. Yes. And they Which love is, it. And they love and it. That, and I mean, it. And Elena, like she said, she says, Mom, she says, first of all, you know, uh, uh, it's on. But uh, she says, I don't want to be affiliated with the church. Because, I mean, you work with a Macedonian, and you know, when you're with an organization, they tell you what to do, and, uh, and it's nicer when you're independent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because, uh, you know, you can, uh, you can do things, sure. and uh, you don't have to. But uh, anyway, Elena says, Mom, as long as the girls are growing up, I want to keep it up, you know. So it is. It's very gratifying to me, oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, to see this continuation, mm -hmm. and to Michael too, of course. Mm -hmm. But to me, you know, starting it, and with the idea that I have, it seems like you know what I want. It's going on. Yeah. The other yeah. thing is, I have seen kids that they cannot say, except of Paracaloti canis and uh, you know, uh, get up, and, and they were very unique in Aurora. But you go to a wedding in Chicago, and if there are kids from Aurora. They just don't stop. I mean, they will have other dances, American dances, but they will be dancing the Greek dances crazy. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, they love it. So it's, it's very gratifying, like I said. That was another thing I started to say earlier about the parents of some of these, the Greek parents. Um, we would have a dinner dance. We would have a church function or something like that. And the dance floor would be pretty much empty. The adults would get up and, you know, Elena Chorepsis, now, now the music starts. There's no room for the adults. <laughs> The, the kids take over the dance floor. And I don't mean uh, uh, young adults, I'm talking about Mikrapedia. Mm -hmm. Young kids, my little granddaughters, yeah. and eight, nine, ten years old, they're out there dancing. And you can't find any room for the adults to get out. Uh, and dance as down. far as I said, gratifying, uh, did we have any problems? Sure, you have problems, you know. I mean, yeah. yourself, you know. Uh, it, 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 you know you're dealing with people, and uh, the hardest, I think, race, it's the Greek race. And uh, there were some people that they were not as happy at times because their son was not dancing in the front. 
And then you say, okay, I'll put the son in the front. And then the mother sees that the son cannot, you know. <laughs> so, and we, ha we had some, sure. you know, situations. So, anyway, the dance troupe was, has been a very, very important part of our life and, uh, uh, and continues to be and probably will continue for a while. But my daughter falls in love and uh, decides that she's going to get married. And my daughter and my wife put their heads together and come up with an idea, and I'll let my wife tell the story of my daughter's Greek folk wedding.